So I want to go back to what we mentioned with the Faraday lesson. And let's say that we have a solenoid here, and I'm pushing my magnet into the solenoid. What's going to happen? If I push my magnet into the solenoid, there's going to be, again, as we discussed, there's going to be a change in flux over time. And so there's going to be an EMF by Faraday's law. That means that because the, the, you know, there's, there's a voltage, there's an EMF, that there should be a current flowing. This current can only flow in one of two directions. It can flow um, down on the front, like this. Or it could flow up on the front. Can't do both though, so it, it has to pick between one of these options. Right? It has to pick between one of these options. Now, it is physics, so it probably is, is deterministic as to which way it's going to go. Let's say that's going to go up on the front. Let's just say hypothetically it's going to up. It's going to go up on the front. Can you tell me which direction um, north is going to be? So if you do your right hand grip rule, and you point your thumb toward and and um, you you have your your um, kind of uh, tendons on on this part facing you, you should see that your thumb points towards the left. If you're not comfortable with this. Go and have a watch of the solenoid video. So this is going to be the North Pole, this is going to be the South Pole. This is going to be a little bit problematic. If I have a North Pole coming in, so it, it's going to, this South Pole is going to be induced, and this North Pole is going to be like, wow, I love South Poles, right? Opposites, opposites attract. So that's going to make this solen, that's going to make my magnet go even faster, right? So it's, it's going to go really, really fast through this, because it, it's going to get attracted to the South Pole, right? North and South attract, like when you have two magnets, they just stick together, right? They just want to stick together, they just, you know, they just fly, fly towards each other. This is a problem, right? Because consider my energy initial, my initial energy, how much energy do I have? Let's say that I have one joule of um, kinetic energy, right? So I put in one joule of kinetic energy, Let's see the energy final. Well, what's going to happen? Well, um, my magnet's going to gain kinetic energy because it's going to get attracted. It's going to get sucked in by this south pole. So let's say that there's two joules of kinetic energy, and I might have let's say 0.4 joules of electrical energy being generated because you know I have some current running inside here. If I had a light bulb, I could power that light bulb. It'll be glowing. I have a bit of electrical energy here. So let's say I have. 2.4 joules of energy coming out. So I put in one joule, I get out 2.4 joules. That's not how it works. This is a violation of the law of conservation of energy, right? That's very bad. Let's see what happens if I were to reverse this. Let's say that I don't have it going up on the front. Let's say I, I have it going down on the front. In this case, which direction is north? Well, north is going to be on the right hand side. So what's going to happen here, right? Well, as my magnet comes in, the North Pole is going to see its North Pole and say, oh, gross, yuck, right? It's going to be repelled. That's going to slow down my magnet. Let's see if that, slows, if that fixes my problem. So my energy initial, I still give my magnet one joule of energy. Energy final. Well, what's going to happen to the kinetic energy? Well, it's going to get slowed down, right? Because it doesn't like this North Pole. It's going to get slowed down. It's going to get retarded. And so let's say, you know, let's say it, now there's only 0 0.6 joules of kinetic energy, so my magnet will slow down. Um, and, you know, there, there, there will still be electrical energy because there is current flowing. So maybe there's 0 0.4 joules. So there's one joule of energy out. This is good. I put in one, in one joule, I get out one joule. This is preserving the conservation of energy. And so this is Lenz's law in action, right? So Lenz's law says, what does Lenz, Lenz's law says? Lenz's law says that the EMF induced will always oppose what created it. So the EMF, it doesn't want to exist. The EMF has to oppose um, the, the, the whatever created it. And this allows us to prevent violating the law of conservation of energy, which would be very bad. So, 
That's Lenz's law in a nutshell, and we can actually represent it on the equation. So you would have seen Faraday's law actually written like this. Uh, the negative sign just reminds you that the EMF must oppose what created it. Um, we, you don't need to really use it. Um, the best way to understand Lenz's law is by having a look at a few examples. So let's get into that. So let's have a look at the first question, which is the magnetic field strength decreases, um, and you are asked to figure out which direction will the current flow. So let's say that we reduce the magnetic field strength. We get rid of some of this. So we so we reduce the magnetic field strength, and you know the question now is which direction will the current flow will be clockwise or will it be anti-clockwise? How can we figure that out? Well. First of all, why is there a current in the first place? There's a change in flux over time. We have less crosses. That leads to an EMF by Faraday's law, which leads to a current. Um, and the question is, current clockwise or anticlockwise? So step one to do this is to identify, identify the change. So the change was less crosses. So how are we going to oppose a decrease in crosses? Well, so identify how to oppose. This should be quite it's quite obvious. If you want to oppose, if you want, if there's less crosses, you want to increase crosses. So the question is, how can we increase crosses? Well, either will a clockwise current increase crosses, or will an anti-clockwise current increase crosses? So let's try the first of all. Let's 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 try this one where it goes upwards. Let's try an anti-clockwise one. Will this increase or decrease crosses? Let's have a look. So here I have a loop of wire. Let's check it out. Let's say that. I'm going to use my right hand grip rule for a for the direction of a magnetic field around a current carrying conductor. I'm going to wrap my fingers around the wire like so. My fingers pointing upwards because the current was going upwards. Let's see which direction that the current goes in, right? So I'm going to have my current again, it flows from your knuckle, from your knuckle towards your fingertip, like you're pointing, right? So I'm going to draw it on like, like, like this. flows from my knuckle to my fingertip, that's meant to be an overhead. So, it goes this way. So let's have a look for it. Which direction, so here, am I going to create a dot across? Well, I can see that this is going to be um, like this. So this is going to be a dot, because you can see that this, this, this uh, magnetic flux is coming out of the page into your face, right? This is out of the page. Over here, it's into the page. So let's translate that onto our diagram. So we can see that with our magnetic field, we're going to have more dots here and more crosses on the outside. Is that what we wanted though? No, we wanted more crosses on the inside. So let's try something else. Let's, let's try going downwards. So now I can see that if I go, if, if I wrap my fingers down with like, like this, well, well then what happens? We can see on this side, I have my 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 my, uh, my my magnetic field points down into the page, right? You can see it kind go, of goes down into the page there. That that's a cross, and it's going to go it goes up and out of the page, um, on this side. So we have dots on the on out on the outside, crosses on on the inside. So let's have a look here. We're going to have crosses on the outside, crosses on the inside, dots on the outside, and so we f fulfilled it. So therefore, it's going to be clockwise. Now, one question that students have is, okay, well, hang on. Um, that does increase the number of crosses on the inside, but it doesn't increase the number of crosses on the outside. And that's true. Um, the fact of the, of the matter is we only consider what happens inside a loop. Stuff that happens outside the loop is out of our control. It doesn't really matter. The loop cares about what's happening inside itself. Inside the loop is all that we care about. It doesn't matter what happens on the, on the outside. Let's have a go at a few more questions. So what's going to happen here is that as I have my, my loop enter into this field, first of all, let's identify the change. The change is we have more dots, right? We have more dots. Okay. So the second of all, we want to identify how to oppose. So therefore, we want to decrease dots. There is a problem though. If you realize we can only induce a current and the current can only do one or two things. It can either increase dots on the inside, which probably wouldn't be good for us, or it can induce crosses on the inside, 
we can't directly get we can't directly decrease the number of dots. However, if we induce crosses, if we induce crosses, the crosses will cancel out with the dots such that we do decrease the number of dots. So let's have a go at that. Let's say that we have a downwards current, just chose that randomly, and let's see if that will give us crosses on the inside. This is my 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 um, coil that's going into the magnetic field. I'm gonna wrap my fingers around it. Okay, let's see how the 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 uh, the uh, current goes. So it's a little bit tricky to see, but if I kind of rotate for you, you can see here that the current on, on the inside we have crosses, right? Because because the because the, the magnetic field line is going into the page. It's going into the page. On the outside, we have a dot because it's kind of coming out, out through here and down inside there. Let's translate that onto our diagram. What we're going to have, well, we're going to have my loop. And if I go downwards, I'm going to have crosses on the inside, which is good because these crosses are going to oppose these this increase in dots. Hence, I'm going to have, um, hence, this is going to be what Lenz's law says is good. Let's say that I have this question where I have a piece of wire that is spinning inside this magnetic field um, and it's spinning in the sense of like a, like a hula hoop spin. If this is my piece of wire, I mean spinning in this sense. So it's just kind of like spinning around and around like this. So in that case, which direction will the current be? Will it be clockwise or anti-clockwise? This is actually a trick question because let's have a think about this. Is there a change in flux over time? No, because we can see that this, even if we spin it, right, we're still gonna have one, two, three flux lines inside. There is no change in flux. So there's no EMF. No, there's no EMF, therefore no current. It's a trick question. Let's have a look at another question. Let's have a look at this, this question. So we have a solenoid and we have a south pole being pushed into the solenoid. The question is, uh, which direction will the current run? Well, let's have a think about this, right? So we have a south pole coming in. The solenoid's like gross. I don't want to be, I don't like this increase in flux. I don't like it at all. I want to oppose you. It's going to oppose it by inducing either a north pole or a south pole here. Now let's have a think. If you produce a North Pole here, would that oppose the South Pole? No, because the South Pole is like, oh, I love North Poles. It's actually going to have a force of attraction. It's going to go faster and faster. It's going to run towards this uh, solenoid. So that's no good. We instead need a South Pole here because the South Pole is like, oh, gross, the South Pole. So it's going to be re repelled. It's going to be slowed down. It's going to slow down. It's going to become retarded with respect to this um, solenoid is. It's going to oppose the entry of the magnet. So set number one, identify the change south incoming. So to oppose it, we're going to repel south. So the way to repel the south pole is by inducing a south pole. Okay, good. That means that that must mean we have a north pole on the left hand side. Now the only question left is which direction should I, it will, will the current flow? So to have a north pole on your left hand side, I am going to see that the current runs up on my on my on my um, tendons on my on, on the back of my hand. So it should be this way. So we should have current running down there because if it's going up here, it's going to trace it down, be like that. Maybe this way, up there. Let's have another go. So this time I have a north pole that's being dragged away from my solenoid. So what's gonna happen here? Well, my solenoids, so it's number one, the change is reduced, reduced north pole. And so to oppose this, we wanna increase the north. We, 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 we wanna say, hey, no, 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 don't go away. We wanna increase north. Well, I, I guess we can say we can, we can, we can pull back north pole. Right, so the North Pole come back, right? So if we induce a North Pole here, that'll be really bad. That would just prompt the North Pole to go even uh, away even faster. We want a South Pole here to tantalize this North Pole back. 
So again, we want a south pole here, north pole here. It's the exact same thing as before. We want to have an upwards current on, on the front. So a sideways current here. Let's have got a, 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 one more question. So this question's a bit more tricky, right? This question has a, a uh, battery here. So the question is, let's say that I have, oh, sorry, I should have drawn the, drawn the switch here. Let's say that I close this, this, the, the uh, switch here. What is going to be the current on the right hand side? Let's have a think about this, right? So if I close the switch, this is positive, this is negative. So I'm gonna have my current running inside of my left hand solenoid. Be running this way, this way, up, up, and then down on the front. Down the front, down the front, down the front. If it's running down on the front, then use your right hand. Which direction? Which direction is the north pole? North pole is going to be on the right hand side. So we're going to have a big north here, big south here. Okay. If we have an increase in number one, so let's have a think about the change, right? So the change. For, so this is the one. So this is the one where Lenz's law and Faraday's law should be applied. Number one, the change. What is the change? We have a growing north field, growing slash increasing. North Pole. How, 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 how will I oppose it? I will oppose it by... I don't want to be near this North Pole. I, I want to reduce the North Pole. So again, I only have two options. Either induce the North Pole or induce the South Pole. If I induce the South Pole, then that's really bad. Because then that means that I, I, I'm now attracted to it. So I'm going to draw myself closer. The whole point was to reduce the f how close we are to this North Pole. So to do that, we're going to induce, instead induce a north pole here. North pole, north pole, it, it's repelled. We we can fly away. We can go away. Because we go away, we are reducing how much we can feel or smell or see that north pole. That's good. So we want a north pole here, south pole here. How can we do that? Do your right hand grip rule for the solenoid. We can see that the current should be running up on the front. Right, up on the front. And so that means down there, and the current should be running this way. I hope you guys enjoyed this video on Lenz's Law. Um, I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye. We offer physics, chemistry, and math tutoring. For more insightful explanations like this one, head to tutorgum.com.